Hi, I'm Andy. And I'm Lindsay. Welcome to e-commerce marketing with the Pitbulls, where we try to cut through the noise and simplify digital marketing for authentic brands looking to make more sales online. Today, we're going to be covering a topic that we hear a lot of questions about um, different folks thinking through, uh, one, can I set up Google ads and just kind of let them run myself? Um, but two, if I'm going to contract an agency, once we get everything set up, um, can I just kind of set it and forget it and, and let that let them run? Um, so our, our short answer is no. Once once you're running Google ads, you really should be keeping an eye on it. Um, after all, you are spending some money on it. So you want to make sure that you're um, you know kind of being a good steward of your money. It's awfully easy for small changes, small issues to go and you know end up spending a ton of your money without getting any real results in. Um, but today we're going to cover in a little bit more detail um, some of the big reasons why uh, you really need to um, be keeping an eye on your Google Ads account, and ultimately, really, what management of a Google Ads account, ongoing management, really entails, and what you should be expecting of um, yourself or any agency that you ultimately uh, contract this out to. Here is our top five reasons for hiring someone to keep an eye on your Google Ads account to continue to make changes and just continue to make sure it's operating at its best. Uh, we've got A-B testing and optimization, seasonality and competitor changes, Google Ads changes to the platform itself, goals and product mix changes, and just changes elsewhere in the digital marketing landscape. Great. Um, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Can you walk us through what we mean when we say A-B testing and optimization? Um, what, what needs to be done there um, for ongoing Google Ads management? Yeah, absolutely. Really important to think about when you think about setting up a Google Ads account in general. I think a lot of small business owners think, okay, we just get it set up. We have our campaigns going. We're starting to get purchases in. Everything looks great. Let's just go ahead and set it and forget it. We hear about this a lot. And then what happens is we have people come back to us a month or so later and say, okay, it's not working anymore. Why not? I thought we had this all set up. And that's kind of the nature of the beast. This is not something that you can just set it and everything works for the rest of time. There are so many changes that happen just in the sales landscape with your customers, with your competitors. So you really have to take into consideration things like optimization and A-B testing. And so for optimization purposes, we're talking about making sure that your keywords are constantly efficient and effective, that you're taking out negative keywords that are working against you and maybe spending too much money. Um, and then in A-B testing pieces, we're talking about changing the copy and testing the headlines and the descriptions and the images, and really just making your ads the most effective and the most efficient that they can be. So spending the least amount of money and getting the most in return. And to do that, you need to constantly be keeping an eye on what's working and what's not, and then making changes in response to that. Awesome. Um, so our next point, and Lindsay, you touched on this a little bit, but there's seasonality and competitor changes. So even when your account is running at its optimal, things are going to change over time. So a big piece of this, think seasonality. If you're running sales around the holidays, if demand is changing, um, if you have a, a particular product, I'm thinking like ice cream or chocolate that is you know, more popular in the summertime versus the wintertime. You want to be keeping an eye on things, making sure that you're, um, you know, pushing your budget up or down as appropriate, pushing your target results up or down as appropriate, um, even changing, you know, ad content and strategy um, to kind of match the seasons. And at the same time, competitors are going to be changing and doing different things as well. So something that might be working today may all of a sudden stop working tomorrow if your competitors start bidding on the same keyword or running a similar ad. Um, we see this a lot where all of a sudden results will start to drop off. Um, and a big reason could be that, hey, all those keywords that you're targeting, the, the types of ads that you're running, all of a sudden now your competitors have started kind of targeting that same area or doing that that same piece. So there's not necessarily anything that's changed um, largely from a, a, the business landscape for you specifically, but it could just be that, hey, all of a sudden, you know, the auctions that you're taking part in are becoming much more competitive um, because your competitors are kind of spending money in the same area. So in those cases, you want to be able to, one, keep an eye on it regularly enough that you're they're catching it and making sure that you see that that has happened. Um, but then we can kind of make some changes and, and um, you know, kind of work around that, either targeting different areas or uh, doing different things to make sure that we're getting out ahead of those changes. 
Yeah. And then on top of those kinds of changes, you need to consider the fact that the platform itself is almost constantly changing. We see this a lot with Facebook too. Um, But with Google ads specifically, once you log in, it could be a completely different interface or now they're introducing a new product or a new um, feature that you are just not sure how it works and how it could best benefit your ads. So you need to be prepared for that and then to be able to optimize to make sure those new features in Google ads are actually working for you and not against you. Google's moving towards more um, automation and it's easy to get one of those suggestions pop up and you say, yeah, go ahead, Google, go ahead and do that. (laughs) And you think, okay, I'm probably going to be saving myself money and time just by letting Google take care of it. But then you come back and look at your results and you realize, okay, I basically just gave Google um, the go ahead to spend a ton more money and I didn't even get any results. So you have to really understand what it is those features do and how they're going to best incorporate into your ad strategy. So just keep in mind, Google's constantly uh, changing and adding new features and new products. And um, if you're not staying on top of how those are affecting your industry and how those are just affecting your accounts in general, you may end up spending way more money for less results. Yeah, I love that you brought up the uh, recommendations. I think a lot of times, sometimes there, there's some good insights in there, but more often than not, it's you know different ways that you can spend more money on the platform, um, you know, for better or worse. So really important to be keeping an eye on that, seeing what those automated recommendations are, um, and then also kind of having the the ability to make you know strategic decisions on whether you want to be following through on either those recommendations or even things like new campaign types. Um, you know, I remember a few, I guess it was a few months ago at this point, or, or close to a year ago at this point when we switched over to performance max from smart shopping um there was kind of a, a right time and a wrong time to to make that jump you know it was kind of early on performance max was still quite early so we saw some bugs when you first first started running campaigns on it um, but then ultimately we saw much better performance in the long run so keeping an eye on when you need to turn off old campaigns and jump into newer campaign types um, and kind of yeah knowing when to make those jumps and, and how to make them so that your your uh, performance is is seamless. Yeah, I think it's really important too to point out that Google itself is a company. And so they too are testing these features with us sort of as their guinea pigs. So I know that they do testing before they launch them. But ultimately, as you're looking through some of these recommendations for optimization, you'll notice okay, this doesn't quite make sense when they're telling me I'm going to spend this amount of money and get this amount of conversions or money back. Why would I, why would they suggest to do this? Because it's obviously going to put me in the red. So just keep that in mind that Google's constantly testing themselves and that they're a business out to make money. So even some of those uh, recommendations may really be in Google's benefit as opposed to yours. So you kind of have to play defense when you're looking through those optimization recommendations. Definitely. All right. Our next uh, kind of major area to keep an eye on is that kind of within your own business, there's going to be goals and product mix changes. So um, a big thing, obviously, is new products rolling out. You're going to need to make sure that you're keeping your ads up to date to, you know, when we think about content, uh, copy and uh, creative images, videos, making sure that you're featuring your newest products and we're we're pushing the, the newest products and, and your new lines. Um, but also thinking through like budgets, type of campaigns, certain Certain products might be better for, hey, this is great for a YouTube audience, or hey, this is, you know, really needs a little more education. This is a good search um, type piece where somebody's searching for this particular product. Um, so that's a, a big change. And then also your goals may be changing. So um, different times a year, you might be trying to get different things out. You might be looking for, hey, are we, you know, at a point where we're willing to accept a little bit lower you know, purchase ROAS because we are, you know, looking at customer acquisition and trying to build up our list, or are we at a point where we're really trying to harvest that list that we currently have and try to get as much, you know, as, as many dollars as possible out of our existing customer base, uh, or maybe you're trying to break into a particular particular geography. Um, I guess I, I keep coming back to this, this ice cream chocolate example, but we always see with um, some of our perishable uh, food vendors, you know, over the summer, we want to really focus on making sales close to home because it's so much easier to ship. Um, whereas over the winter, you know, we can start to expand that out and, and you know, kind of reap the rewards of um, selling to a, a broader area. Um, so any of those types of things, you know, it's going to take kind of constant, constantly understanding your business strategy, understanding what you're you're putting out, what you're trying to get done, um, and then you know making sure that your Google Ad strategy reflects that, um, and you're you're making modifications as appropriate. 
Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And something to mention too, is that not every campaign is going to have the same goal. So you have to understand how to set up and structure those campaigns um, with that end goal in mind. If it's not just purchases, maybe you're looking to get more reach or just get eyeballs on the ads in terms of impressions and clicks. So maybe purchases aren't the ultimate goal for specific campaigns, and those are going to look a lot different. So you can't just copy and paste your campaigns that you really got to craft them with that end goal in mind. So I think that's a really great point. Awesome. Yeah. So I think the last piece that we can touch on is just uh, changes elsewhere in the digital marketing landscape. That's something that you have to keep in mind as you're um, thinking about ongoing management of your Google ads. Uh, it's a big world out there and things are constantly changing, not just with the platform itself and with your strategy, but just with the digital marketing landscape that you're selling your products in itself. So thinking about your overarching strategy and how to adapt your campaigns to that. One way that I think about this, I think is a, a pretty good example. In 2020 and um, in 2021, the world greatly changed. So we had to really adapt to that. A lot of people started coming online to sell their products. And as we have moved out of 2020 and 2021, so now into this year, um, people are really adjusting to what does the landscape for my industry look like now, now that we're kind of over the pandemic or starting to move out of it and what our new normal looks like. What is the digital marketing landscape for my industry? It's changing and it's almost changing by industry as well. We're seeing um, a lot of different industries say it's looking better for me now in this way and it's looking worse for me now in that way. So having your Google ads campaigns in mind as the landscape changes. We can't control everything that's sort of bigger than us and bigger than our business, but we can certainly change our campaigns to reflect that and just to be better optimized for that. Yeah, I think that's it's really hammers home why it's so important to understand not only how your Google ads are doing, what the, the performance is there, what your goals are there, but also how that fits into your larger strategy and why, you know, we might think, you know, is Facebook working well or not working well in a particular time frame? How does that affect, you know, how Google ads is performing? And then also, how do they work together? You know, if you're thinking through um, something like email marketing, where you're collecting customer emails and then repurposing that data and using it inside of Google ads, or even using Google ads to, you know, achieve more email customers uh, or, or customers on your email list that then you can final, finally make the, the sale um, via, you know, nurture in your email flows. Um, it's, it's important to remember that the, we're kind of looking at an omni-channel uh, strategy here. We're touching customers across multiple points in the lifecycle journey. So while we're thinking about Google ads and what we're trying to get done there, that doesn't exist in a vacuum. We need to also understand you know, the, the broader strategy of what's, ha what's happening across some other platforms um, and making sure that we are um, you know, really optimizing not only inside of Google ads, but also you know, inside our, our broader strategy. All right. Well, that's our show for today. Hopefully we um, gave you something to think about and gave you some help if you're thinking through, you know, either do I really need to be continuing to keep an eye on my Google Ads account or, or if you're already there, you know, kind of what do you need to be thinking about or, or how should you be evaluating that agency that you're hiring to do so? Um, yeah. Lindsay, would you read us out? Yeah. So if you liked what you heard today, go ahead and subscribe so that you'll get notified every time we have a new episode. And then if you're ready to take the next step in your digital marketing journey, go ahead and check out ppcpitbulls.com slash assessment to take our digital marketing maturity assessment and we'll help you determine your next best step. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.